Project Dave. I'm just going to do a very quick um, how to compute ROI. For those people that work with me as participants in my programs, um, this is really a reference so that you can just see exactly how it's done. Um, it's going to be very quick, and this is just a theoretical example, so I'm not trying to be real here. I do start with a cost of capital of 10%. That's a discount rate, which is the same as an interest rate, and we do that so that we can present value back over time the value of money. We know a dollar today is worth a whole lot less five years from now because there's 10% opportunity cost to invest that over a five-year period. So you're going to want your money today, or you're going to want it to at least see it in today's dollar. So we'll be doing net present value and internal rates of return. Um, the way I've built my worksheet here is it's going to be a legacy to cloud example, and I have separated out any benefit that's attributable to revenue, such as time to market. Um, that would be an example, net of any cost. So this is a cash flow benefit. The second part of this is any operating type expenses, such as legacy cost, uh, FTEs, license fees, things that we can benefit from by eliminating and creating a cash flow benefit. And I'll go ahead and fill that in this in one second. The third thing is project cost, such as writing off infrastructure that uh, no longer would have value as a result of transitioning to a cloud deal, um, maintaining and implementing through consulting, and, and usually there's a lot of upfront consulting cost in getting a deal. Uh, uh, transition from legacy to cloud, uh, software license subscription fees, and of course the list goes on. I'm not going to try to be that specific or that detailed here. You'll see as I go ahead and fill this out that the graphs fill out automatically, and then we will calculate using 10%, and we can change that, but 10% discount rates will calculate the net present value of those benefits, the internal rate of return, and you do a payback manually by just looking at when you'll be paid back. I'm going to quickly just put some guesstimates in here. Let's say that we can get to market faster the first year that we're implementing this, a half a million, and then we get a million dollar benefit, a two million dollar benefit, a 2.5 million dollar benefit, and a three million dollar benefit. That's the net cash flow impact of getting to market faster by implementing. It could be a cloud-based CRM. It could be a faster database capability. It could be faster provisioning testing it could get whatever it is that gets us to market faster getting our products out to the customer faster possibly getting a premium for that we would incorporate that up here in the revenue net number um, let's say that we eliminate legacy and upgrade costs let's say I was going to go ahead and put a two million dollar investment in to buy a legacy system I don't need to do that and let's say in 2019 I was going to put another million dollars in the legacy system to upgrade it and to manage it I don't need to do that if I'm on the cloud so I'm going to consider that a benefit Let's say that I'm saving a half a million dollars in FTEs or people, full-time equivalents. It goes up to a million. Uh, we'll go ahead and inflate that to a, a, a million one in uh, the next year. Because uh, labor cost always goes up 1.2, and we'll get a benefit of 1.3 for a full $5 million in benefits over the five-year measurement period that we've decided to use here. License fees, we pay a million in license. We would have paid 1.1 million the year after that, 1.2. License fees tend to go up with time, 1.3 and 1.4 million. So we save $6 million in license fees by going into the cloud. Again, these are just for the fun estimates. Maintenance and other, let's say that it's a half a million dollars every year. We'll just bring that across. Should be able to just drag that forward. And then other, let's put that down at 500,000 as well and we'll just drag that forward. That's $25.6 million in total benefits, some attributable to revenue, some attributable to OPEX and reductions of that nature, but this is a cash flow benefit over a five-year period, and you can see that each year uh, comes down to a total column. You can see we're building our graphs as we go. Now we've got to move over to the cost side, which is going to go against our net cash flow benefit side. I'm going to be really uh, tough on this deal and say that we are going to have a uh, $6 million write-off up front, just all this legacy equipment sitting in data centers and throughout our global organization that isn't going to have much recapture value. It's going to net down to a $6 million write-off. A lot of CFOs would be unhappy about that. A lot of deals, you'd try to recapture that by getting value out of those assets. Um, but let's just figure we got a $6 million hit. Uh, consulting, we're going to go heavy on that. $2 million to get this deal in. Uh, and then a half a million dollars uh, in consulting um, uh, in year two, another half a million, 
uh, we'll take it down to 200,000 and then we'll pay the consultants 100. So the consultants are always in there making things happen, fixing problems, but there is a big upfront consulting cost on this deal. Uh, software license subscription fees. Let's say that we're gonna pay uh, basically a million dollars a year in subscription fees. Um, and that's gonna give us the, um, uh, the cloud uh, capabilities we're paying on what we use. Uh, let's say that we can increase that to 1.2 because we're growing our business, 1.3 and 1.4. Just to say that we do grow our business and we'll provision more, we'll use more as we grow. Uh, so at this point, I'm looking at 15.2 million against $25.6 million for a net cash flow deficit in year one of four, then three benefit, five, five, and five. Uh, netting down to 10 at a 10% discount rate we are eight million dollars positive on the net cash flow so all i'm going to do is present value back my cash flows to a net present value of eight million dollars for an 83 percent internal rate of return my customer's looking for 100 percent, so this is not going to cut it but let's go ahead and just first of all let me share with you how i calculate these numbers internal rate of return is the easiest one so what i do and and uh, this is very simple just take a look at what I do, and if you want to, you can replay this over and over again. I go to formula, I go to financial, I go to IRR. It's right there, very simple. It just says, look, put the values in for your net cash flow benefit right here. Just put those values in, just scroll across, and right there, 82.8 or 83%. Look how fast that is. That returns the internal rate of return for a series of cash flows. So Microsoft has basically used the word to define it. What it really is, is Pitcher putting $4 million into the bank and getting three, five, five, and five as interest over time, the five years. What you're really doing is getting an interest rate of 83.8%. Or technically, that is the interest rate or the rate that will take this stream of cash flows over time to zero. Um, if that hurts your head, don't worry about it. Uh, but that's how I got my 83%. If I want to do a net present value of these benefits, that's different. This is internal rate of return. That's the internal, internal interest rate in this deal. But if I want to find out how do I take the, the, the dollars, the real dollars at the end of each period, and how do I get a net present value? Again, it's just as simple. Watch what I do. It's a financial formula. It's called NPV. So I just go to NPV. It says, what's your discount rate? Um, my rate is 10%. So I just put that in there. And then I scroll across the net right there. And I go, now this is returns the net present value of the investment based on a discount rate and a series of future payments. It gives you the number right there. That's 8.27. It rounded it here to eight. Um, so that's how I would do that. Very simple. You do have to have a discount rate. Now, if I increase that rate to 30%, I'm really increasing the interest rate on the deal. You can see that that has a very burdensome, negative, nasty impact on my net benefits because by increasing the discount rate or the cost of capital, I've increased the interest rate. That uh, gives me less benefit as more of the benefit is then allocated to cost in terms of the interest rate. So the lower the discount rate, the better. Many of your customers will provide uh, the worst operating divisions or the least popular division within a company a very high discount rate, they'll see fewer deals. The most popular division subsidiary or the one that's the star, the hot, the, 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 the number one in the, in the company, they get a very low discount rate because they'll see more deals and see more opportunities because the lower the discount rate, the better the deal looks. Now you can of course do what if scenarios here and say that 83% is not gonna cut it. What if we buy back or what, what if this equipment did have value? If you're able to find somebody to give you value for this equipment, let's say that um, that uh, the write off on on um, the uh, write off on on this equipment um, goes to zero, for example. Um, so we just have the consulting fees. Uh, we don't have any equipment to write off. We're now positive $2 million. Notice that the internal rate of return here went to an error because if there's no investment, there can be no internal rate of return because it's a self-funding deal. Imagine going to a bank and getting these payments without making the investment. They wouldn't do that. So the infinite internal rate of return is a function of a self-funding deal, which 
immediately puts a benefit, not the requirement or a deficit uh, in year one there, for example. And so what happens here is we like cloud deals because they, are, they do tend to be self-funding. They do tend to have an infinite internal rate of return as this one just indicated. Um, I believe we had six here. And then you could see that we would go back. Now, let's say I want to get to that 100%. You can do some what if scenarios here. What if we were able to uh, actually get $2 million and $3 million, $4 million, and $4 million five time to market? If you're able to get the customer to understand that they could get better numbers than what you originally started out with, just by improving any one of these factors, I got an internal rate of return that now exceeds their expected hurdle rate. And a hurdle rate means I want to see deals that'll give me more than 100% internal rate of return. We just hit the hurdle, so we're, we're over the hurdle. Uh, we obviously have very nice big blue benefit bars, far exceeding the investment bars. Uh, so visually, it looks like a good deal. $12 million benefit at 10%, uh, if we, do a what if and say, what if we do 15%? Doesn't change the internal rate of return, but it does reduce our net present value. Still, I would have at the end of five years, $10 million uh, in my corporate treasury that I would never have if I didn't do this cloud deal. That's how internal rate of return works. Um, this is an 11 and a half minute video. It goes over uh, internal rate of return, net present value, the time value of money. I built this worksheet just using simple Excel. Uh, many of you got a copy of this, uh, but anyone can put this worksheet together using Excel. You can use the Google uh, products and other worksheet products as well. Uh, I just default to Excel because this is the one I typically used when I do internal rates of return like this. Uh, you can get far more complex with deferred taxes, taxes, depreciation. But from a selling perspective, and we are talking about a sales professional trying to understand the financial impact of a deal, this is more than enough for you to understand so that you can articulate and talk to your customer to find out what the discount rate is so that you may want to run some very quick rough numbers using your Excel worksheet. Or you could give this information to a finance expert within your own enterprise and have them work this. But this does give you a little bit more insight into how, how, how this works. There's far more videos on YouTube and other resources that are out there on internal rate of return and net present value. And I certainly recommend that you take a look at those. Um, thank you very much. Take care.